Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. In this video, we are going to look into the ways how to implement Kafka with microservices. Yes, we have already covered how to implement Kafka, but that was in a single application. But now, in the real time, this is not how we implement Kafka, right? We would have one producer and we have multiple consumers or we might have multiple producers and multiple consumers. So, it's not just one application is capable enough to send the message to Kafka and get the message from Kafka. That, that is not how it works in real world. So, in this video, we are going to have two different microservices. One will be producer, one will be consumer. So, before that, we would need some installation steps. If you have not covered in the previous one, I will quickly cover that in this video also, where I will give you quick tips where you can install the Kafka, run it in local with the zookeeper, extract it, and then how you can run Kafka from the PowerShell and admin mode in Windows. So, if you click on this particular link in the Apache Kafka of downloads, you will have multiple supported release. Here, you can click on any of those. Usually, what we select is this Scala one. You can go for Scala 1, 2 or 1, 3, whichever you like. Doesn't matter because these are basically developed for multiple Scala versions, but it matters only if you are using Scala. We don't use Scala for this particular demonstration. So, you can uh, download any of them. I already have one downloaded, 2.12. So, this is what I have right now. Installed already in my system. So, just click on this. You will have your tar downloaded there. Just extract that particular tar. Once you extract it, you can save it in either of the locations, C or drive or C or D drive. I have it in my D drive right now. The next thing, as soon as you have extracted and you have it in the system, now you have to go to your PowerShell in the admin mode and navigate to Kafka folder. Why I'm saying uh, to add in an admin molder, folder because there might be multiple things where you need to modify. Like for example, the logs is to be there, right? Uh, logs are usually in the D folder with the temp directory. So here, in the D folder itself, in the temp directory, you can see the Kafka logs. So, this needs modifications whenever you run your Kafka and the zookeeper parts. So, that is the reason I always prefer running the PowerShells in the administrator mode. So, I have both of them running in the administrator mode. You have to open two PowerShells commands. One for the zookeeper and the second is for Kafka. And in both the PowerShells, see, I have both. I, this is for zookeeper, this is for Kafka. So, in both of them, you have to navigate to your base folder for Kafka. That is, for me, it is D, Kafka, and that's it. And then, with the next command, you can always go to bin folder, windows, and then start the zookeeper bat and configure your properties for zookeeper and similarly configure your server properties or the bootstrap server properties for Kafka. So, uh, these three commands and you're good to go to run your Kafka in local. So, first command is common for both of these uh, PowerShell windows you have. Then this command you have to run in first of the PowerShell where you're going to run your zookeeper in local. The second is to run your Kafka server in local. So here I have my zookeeper up and running. So here you can see I have my zookeeper start that back. And then this is usually written in Scala. And the zookeeper is now started for me. And it is creating the log directory where I have already told you. Like in the D temp folder, right? In the D in the temp folder, you have your Kafka logs here. The second is the Kafka. Here also what I have done is I have been to the D Kafka folder and then I have run my Kafka server.bat with the properties fetched from server.properties. And here I have my server up and running. Now with my Kafka up and running, my zookeeper up and running, I am good to go because my zookeeper is up, my Kafka is up. I am good to go to send any message from producer to consumer. So, the, this is all about the basic installations you have to do to make the Kafka up and running in the local. The prerequisite for this is at least you should have your Java in the system, in your Windows system. You should at least have your Java home and your path set. Then only your Kafka will work. The next important thing that I have not told you in the previous video is to have the Offset Explorer. So, go to kafkatools.com. Click here. You will be navigated from kafkatools.com to this offset explorer just download it for your windows or mac whatever you have and it will look something like this this is the ui where you will be able to see all the messages you have in your in your kafka topic so here you have to give the cluster name this can be anything like local kafka cluster in my system the bootstrap server is going to be the 9092 so so it will be localhost 9092 for your kafka broker then the Kafka version, I have the Kafka version as Kafka 2.12. So here I have to 
have 2.1 and then just test it from here and ping from here so i have given this as local kafka is the name i have the bootstrap server as localhost colon 9092 try pinging this it says service listening on the specified port because my bootstrap or the kafka server is up and running i said okay and then if you want to test it it says connection successfully you want to add this i'm going to say it as no you have to say it as yes because i have this already in place and i have all my brokers this is the broker code decode with 9092 and these are my all the topics it's code decode code decode kafka these are my topics already there if i can go to this partition you can go to the data start fetching the data you can see that this on this offset zero my value is high code decode for you this might be binary so to change it go to your topic in the topic you have properties in the properties it might be byte array for you so you have to make it to string do not forget to click on this update as soon as you update it your data will start coming in this simple string value and then whenever your producer is going to produce something it is going to be visible here if this all the setup is ready for you let's quickly go ahead and start implementing our producers and consumers so this is just one step we have download the kafka extract the zip save it to the location open to powershells navigate to your kafka folders start the zookeeper start the kafka parallelly you can install your uh, offset manager and download the offset explorer and then there you can see what are the partitions what are your topics what is an offset and how it is working simultaneously you can create the two microservices that is open the spring initializer so to create your two microservices that is your producer and your consumer go to the spring io where this is spring initializer for you now i'm going to create two things the producers and the consumers so i'm going to use java but a maven project i'm going to use the latest spring boot that is spring boot 3.3.4 so here i'm going to implement the kafka with microservices in spring boot 3 now here as soon as you go to spring boot 3 now here you i have to give the group name so it is going to be com dot code decode dot kafka producer demo so this is going to be my producer demo the name of this is going to be the producer keep it in the word this is a demo project for kafka producer and the package name is going to be com code decode kafka producer demo it's going to be the jar or the war and this is going to be the 17 the dependencies i'm going to add is the web dependency not, and also the kafka is important one so apache kafka spring for apache kafka it is for messaging with this you have your producer ready generate this and this is downloaded here let's create the consumer also so again java maven with the same one i'm going to create the consumer for me and the name is going to be consumer. This is a demo project for Kafka consumer. And this is a code decode Kafka consumer demo with Java 17. Here also Spring Web in this. So now if you can see, you must have two demos right now. So two demo zip, demo.zip and demo1.zip. So I'm going to rename this. So more options and rename as producer.zip and consumer.zip now i'm going to extract them so extract all and similarly for consumer also i'm going to extract all so here you can see producers and consumers are ready i'm going to cut them and add it to my workspace so in the pcd in my code decode projects I'm going to add my producer and consumers, but I'm going to add it in a new folder called as Kafka demo. And here I'm going to have my producer and my consumer in the Kafka demo. So in my Kafka demo, I have my producer and consumer ready. In the IntelliJ, I'm going to open code decode projects, Kafka demo, my consumer and my producer. Okay. I'm going to trust these projects and I have two windows open. One have the producer, another should have my consumer. Great. So in this SRC main Java, I have my consumer application ready. And here in the resources, I have my application name as consumer. Here also in my producer SRC main Java, I have my producer application ready. 
and in the resources I have my application dot properties here. If you go and see in the POM, you can see what we have. We have Spring Boot 3, we have used Spring Boot 3. We have Java version 17, which is all updated. We have Spring Boot Starter Test, we have Spring Boot Starter Web, and we have Spring Kafka. This is the dependency which is very important for integrating with Spring Kafka. If everything is in place, we have the producer in place, we have the consumer in place. Now let's start implementing Kafka. So this is going to be the Maven script for me. So I'm going to update this and have the Maven project loaded. So now here in the producer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the controller and the service layer. I'm going to hit the controller that is going to call my service layer and send the message to my topic. That is what is expected. So here in my producer, I'm going to create two new packages named as controller and service. Now in interview, I will never suggest you to just create one configuration class and try sending it from just that producer application.java. That is not how the Java enterprise application works, right? Please try creating a controller and service and do it in a proper way. Now in the, in the controller, I'm going to create a new class called as producer controller. This producer controller is going to be the rest controller. If you don't want to end up with request mapping, that's completely fine. It will be going to be your local host, your port number and directly your post or put method or get method you will have. In the service, now I'm going to create the producer service. This service is going to be the responsible service for sending your message to your topic on the Kafka cluster. Now here in the product producer service, I'm, I want to have the Kafka. So I need some Kafka properties here, right? So there are a few well-defined Kafka properties that I'm going to paste here. Then I'm going to explain what they do. So here you can see these are some predefined properties for Spring Boot Kafka. So for Spring Kafka, there is going to be a bootstrap server. This is going to be your broker. The broker, I have already covered what is broker, what is cluster, what is topic, what is offset, what is partition, how, how the consumer groups uh, are created, how a consumer is assigned to a consumer group. Everything is covered in the Kafka tutorial that I've created. Now too much of theory, I'm not going to cover theory here for you. This is only the practical implementation. So I'm expecting you to understand that the bootstrap server is actually the broker. That is a part of the cluster in Kafka. Now here, the Kafka producer key, uh, the key serializer is the one which is used for serialization and deserialization. Remember, whenever a data is going out of this application, Java application, it has to be serialized and sent. Whenever it is coming out of the Kafka topic, it has to be deserialized so that it is human visible. So for that reasons, we have serializers here. So key serialization, value serialization, we are using as string serializer. Very soon you will be seeing these things in your console also. I'm going to show that to you. Now the next important thing is Kafka topic name. This is not something which is given by Spring or these predefined things. This is something I am going to use as a custom property in my service to send the messages to the topic. Now I'm going to name this as Kafka topic. Okay. Just for clear verification that this is going to be a Kafka topic for me. And I'm going to run this on a server port 8081. Because I have one consumer also, if both of them runs at 8080, it will be a port config for me. So this is how my properties are done for producer. This is all what I want as a external properties for my Kafka service, Kafka producer service. Now in this producer service, I would be needing to which topic I have to send. So at the rate value and in that I want a dollar and the property name. So my property name is Kafka topic name. And this is where I will have private string topic name. And we have all the compilations gone. Now here I'm going to create a method, a send method, okay? So public void send message, string message. A message will be the one which is coming from the controller to us. And this is going to send the message to my topic. But before that, I would need some Kafka template injection. So here I have the Kafka template. So here I'm going to have the Kafka template with me. And in the producer service, I'm going to 
have this Kafka template injected to the constructor injection. Now, in the same method, I'm going to use this Kafka template and I'm going to send my message. So, Kafka template.send and in the bracket, I can have my topic name and message. The message is something which is going to come from the controller there. So, in the producer service, what we are going to do? We are going to fetch the topic name dynamically at runtime from the properties file. Don't hard, hard code it even in the interviews. I am going to auto wire or co constructor inject my Kafka template. This Kafka template is important for sending the message to a particular topic with that particular message or the body. So in this topic, I am going to send the message. And what is this topic? The topic is known as Kafka topic for me. This Kafka topic right now is not here. So if you can see in the topics, I have only three. Code decode, consume option code decode Kafka. Now I should have one more created called this Kafka topic once I run this application. But now I don't have my controller ready, right? So for this, I need to auto wire my producer. And I have to make it as private as I don't want anybody to access it. Apart from me only. And I'm going to have one at the rate post mapping with a path called as slash send and I'm going to have a public method so avoid method send message with a request body so request body is going to be the string message this message is what I'm going to pass to my service so product so producer service dot send message I'm going to send the same message to my producer so when I debug this the method should land here the message should come to this then it should come to this particular send message and on this topic it should be sent when this particular application I'm going to run I'm going to show you that once this is run successfully in the offset explorer I'll be able to see one more topic named as Kafka topic and also, when I'm going to fetch anything in the partition, I'm going to see the message also that I'm going to send through the postman to you. But before that, let's create the consumer service also that is also ready in the simultaneous application in the IntelliJ. So here also for the consumer also, we need the similar properties we have in the producer, but one extra property. And I'm going to tell you what it is. So here, I'm going to just copy everything. So my again, my broker is still 809092. Again, I'm going to use the serialization. Again, the same topic is the one where consumer is going to read from. So a producer is going to produce to the same Kafka and a consumer is going to read from the same Kafka topic. But my server port will change. Otherwise, 8081 will be consumed by two applications and it will be a conflicting port. So the consumer is going to run at 8082, producer is going to run at 8081. But there is one more important property that we have to add here. That is print.kafka.group.id. So this is going to be the group where my consumer is going to be the part of. So I have already covered what is consumer group and why is it important. I will also cover that by the end of this lecture just to be sure that you remember and you understand why consumer group is important. So once this is created, now in the consumer, I don't need any controller because my data is going to come from the producer. So I'm going to create another package called as service. That's it. And this is going to be a consumer service to me. So I'm going to create a class as consumer service. Now, this consumer service is again going to be a service to me. I just have a listener and then in that I will consume it. So, at the rate Kafka listener. So, here I have this Kafka listener. Why? This is with me because I have added a, prop, a POM dependency that is Kafka. If you can see here, this is the Spring Kafka dependency I've added. Because of this, I have the Kafka listener here. Now, it takes two things, a topic where it has to read from and a group. So, right now, I'm just going to copy paste it for you. Then I'll make you understand. So, this Kafka listener is going to read from the topic and the topic name that has to be read at dynamically is Kafka topic name. That is what this Kafka topic name is. And you have a consumer group that is Spring Kafka consumer group where it is going to assign this particular consumer to this particular group ID. Also, the consumer records are these records which are in the particular topic and it is going to listen to. So, as soon as you produce it, the message is going to be received here. Now, your consumer is also ready with all your properties and a consumer service. Your 
your producer is also ready with all your properties and your producer service and the controller now let's try to run this application okay so first of all let's try to have the maven installed for this just to see if everything is fine so let's do the maven install for the producer and it says build success now let's quickly do it for consumer also so in the maven in the consumer let's install quickly and see if everything is fine and yes build is success for both the applications now like let's quickly go to the producer let's go to the application and debug this so if when we debug the controller should go uh, will be the one who is going to respond to my postman request is going to send it to service is going to send to kafka and that i'm going to show it in your offset con offset explorer from there also i'm going to save the same thing in the topic and will be able to see in the consumer also so our producer application has started now this is started now these are producer configurations where you can see all these properties if you can see this is the property that we have used for pre serializer so this this is where your properties are actually helpful all the rest are actually already added the value serializer and key serializer we have externally added in our properties file so yes a my group a partition has been assigned assigned to kafka topic so as discussed as soon as we start the producer application and the consumer application this kafka topic has to be created in your offset server so let's refresh this topic and you can see the kafka topic getting created here now as i have discussed already in the properties you can see your keys are byte arrays so convert them to string and don't forget to click on update as soon as you do this in the data you can see there is no data here so let's go into the producer application and let's try to add a local host 8081 and send so the producer has actually started at 8081 right then here we have one controller which is on 8081 this is going to have a post mapping of send and i'm going to send a body because it's going to have the request body in the string so i'm going to click on draw text that kafka test message on kafka topic so what is the newly created topic here that is the kafka topic for me so if you can see i'm going to send this message on the kafka topic and i'm going to click on send my controller in the producer should be able to handle this so the, the message says kafka topic on this and as soon as i step over the call goes from controller to service layer in the service layer i have this topic kafka topic and the message is going to be sent to the topic this topic you going to send in c in the offset explorer as well as in your consumer so as soon as i'm going to do the step over this call is going to go consumer you can see the code is now in the consumer service and in the consumer service in the debug you can see the message is received here so i'm going to print the received message and the value of this record so i'm going to print this now you can go to the console and you can see that the received message is the one that you have sent here so let's copy this and let's see in the postman yes this is the one that we have sent from here also not just in the consumer you can see the same thing in your offset explorer also so let's start getting the messages so the the first message is going to be assigned to the zeroth partition in the topic and you can see kafka text message on the kafka topic and this is being sent at 10 12 pm on 25th of september 2024 so the proper time stamp and the proper value is seen on the partition zeroth partition of this topic this is the first partition in this topic now if i continue sending more you will be able to see more and more on it let's send the message to and this should be the set the 0 and 1 the first will be your first message the second will be this message to it will be sent from the producer it will be getting you 200 okay you go into this you start fetching more and then again to the zeroth partition the first offset you will get a message too so you if you remember one topic is divided into multiple partitions and one partition is given to multiple offsets and offsets are usually working in the append way of messaging so a one partition getting multiple offsets every message is appended at the end of the offset and you can see this is message too and so on i can keep on giving more messages you can keep on getting more messages so on the offset 2 you get message 3 and this is all at the same time same date 
So this is how you create your producers and consumers. And if you can see the consumer right now, you can see message received two, message received three. And that is why your consumer is good enough to be able to handle all your messages using this Kafka listener. Because it is listening to this topic and is belonging to the same group. So currently this example was only and only with one consumer, one producer and one consumer group. Next demo should be on two consumers belonging to the same consumer group. But we are going to see the demo for this in the next video. If you want this video where we have one producer, multiple consumers of the same consumer group, just let me know in the comment section. I'm going to extend this video to the multiple scenarios where you have multiple producers, multiple consumers, consumer group having multiple consumers or two consumers belonging to two different consumer groups and how they are going to read the data from different consumer groups. I can show that using this offset manager, which offset is read, read by which particular consumer. So I'm going to create three microservices that time, consumer one, consumer two, consumer three, different, different consumer groups or the same consumer groups, all those permutation combination. If you want the next video, just let me know in the comment section. I'll create another video on this Kafka implementation with all time real scenarios for you. Thank you.